In this video, we're going to look at the cell cycle and controls on cell growth. In an earlier discussion, we learned that all cells come from pre-existing cells as we discussed the cell theory. Here I have a rather crudely drawn cell, but we can see a cell with a, a nucleus and inside four chromosomes. So if this cell were to give rise to these two cells, let's discuss what events have to happen. First, let's look at just the genetic material. On this side, I have four chromosomes total, and over here I have eight chromosomes. So somewhere during this process, I'm going to have to double the amount of genetic material, or we're going to have to replicate our DNA. If we look at just the nucleus, uh, the nucleus on this side I have one nucleus, and on this side I have two nuclei. So we're also going to have to double the number of nuclei, or have nuclear division, in this case mitosis. And then look at the cell membrane. Over here I have one cell membrane, or one cell, and over here I have two. So we're also going to have to double our number of cells, or have cellular division, or cytokinesis. So we need to think about all three of those steps having to occur to go from one cell to two. Let's look at where each of those events happens in what we call the cell cycle. When a cell is uh, created, it enters into what we call the G1, or the GAP1 phase, sometimes called the first growth phase. This is basically the day-to-day -day life of a cell, where it's going along doing whatever that cell is designed to do. For many cells, uh, they're never going to leave G1, they're, and they move into what we call G0, or uh, a stage where of, of life where they're never going to divide. They're going to do their job until it's time for that cell to to be gone or to die, but they're never going to divide again. Um, brain cells tend to do this, ne uh, neurons. But other cells are going to grow, and at uh, some time in their growth, uh, in their day-to-day -day life, they receive some signal or stimulus that it's time to divide. And they enter into what we call the S phase. And S stands for synthesis. It's during the S stage when DNA replication occurs. Now in this video, we're just going to say DNA replication occurs, but for a more detailed discussion on how DNA replication occurs, uh, click on the link that I'm going to have right here. It'll take you to a video on DNA replication. But after we replicate our DNA, we double the amount of genetic material, uh, it's time for G2, or GAP2. And this is a time when a cell starts stockpiling raw materials in preparation for this division. Now that we have all the materials we need to divide and we've doubled the amount of genetic material, it's time for mitosis, or nuclear division, where we divide up this genetic material into two uh, equal nuclei. And most of the time, following mitosis, we have cytokinesis, or cell division. Now, in the analogy we've made uh, throughout the course and in the class, we talked about the cell being a factory. In that case, G1 would be the day-to-day -day life of that factory producing whatever that factory does. And at some point, uh, decisions made that it's time to split that into two factories. And then the first event we'd want to do is double the amount of uh, instruction manuals that we have. So we have DNA replication. And then uh, gather up all the raw materials, the extra machinery, uh, the parts we'd need to start up two factories. And then divide the two uh, copies of the instruction manuals into two central offices. And then, of course, divide into two factories. Now, if we look at the cell cycle in a slightly different way, we can see that G1, S, and G2 are actually part of a what we call interphase. And the prefix inter means between. So interphase is the time in a cell's life between divisions. So G1, S, and G2 are the three stages of interphase. And after interphase, we'd move into mitosis. Uh, we had the stages of mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, as the stages of nuclear division. And in this video, we're not going to go into the details of that. But in the video that follows this one, you'll see all the details of how this process occurs. And also, cytokinesis, or cellular division, is in the video that follows this one. So watch that one for the details of that process. In this video, though, we're going to focus more on interphase and the time uh, that we spend in interphase and what kind of controls the passage from one part of interphase into the other. Basically, this is the lifespan of a cell, uh, the time that it spends doing its job uh, in between divisions. And this cell lifespan can be influenced uh, in terms of its length uh, by maybe the type of organism that it's in, um, the type of cell within that organism, or even the age of that organism. So let's look at some of the factors that regulate cell growth in healthy cells. 
Recall from one of our earlier videos when we talked about uh, the parts of the cell, we discussed a problem about uh, and asked a question about whether cells can be large, and we said that we, we had what we called the surface area to volume ratio problem. That as a cell grows larger, its needs increase, as do its waste. And so cells work really hard to maintain a balance. Uh, we call this homeostasis, the movement of materials in, uh, nutrients in, and waste products out. And all these materials uh, in and out have to come in across the plasma membrane. And the larger a cell gets, the harder it becomes to maintain this balance, this, this um, handling, this movement of materials in and out of the cell. As a cell grows larger, its volume will grow faster than its surface area because volume is a cubic function and surface area is a squared function. And as the volume increases, the needs increase. We have to move more things in and more things out of the cell. But these needs have to travel across the surface area to get in. There's more cellular traffic, but not enough roadway to handle it. We said this is one of the reasons that cells are limited in size, or at least depending on their shape. So the key issue is the surface area to volume ratio. We'd like to have a large surface area compared to the volume in order to make it easier to maintain homeostasis. So any cell that's gotten too large and it's struggling to maintain homeostasis, uh, mitosis and cell division would be a good solution. In fact, this increasing difficulty in this maintenance of homeostatic balance can be one of the signals uh, for mitosis and cell division. Another type of growth regulator are chemical signals. And there are a lot of these chemical signals. I'm just going to highlight one uh, briefly here. And that's a molecule or a chemical called chelone. This is a glycoprotein that's produced by the cell itself. And it will um, inhibit mitosis in those cells. So it's a molecule or a chemical that, if absent, will trigger mitosis and cell division. But if it's present, mitosis and cell division are inhibited. And there are also outside chemical signals that can uh, stimulate growth of cells, uh, like hormones. A third type of growth regulator is a concept called contact inhibition. So if I have a, a, a culture medium here and I put some cells in there, those cells will start to grow and divide and start to fill up uh, this space. Eventually, these cells that are growing and dividing will kind of cover the entire surface of this medium. And then the interesting thing happens they stop dividing. It's as if they understand that they're out of room. The physical contact on all sides by other cells inhibits any more cell division. And we know this because if we take a group of these cells out, like just move these out, the cells along this um, exposed region will start to divide again until they fill that space. And then they'll stop. So what's going on in all these cases? Well, this is a diagram with a little bit more detail than most of us need. Uh, if you're in my advanced placement class, we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail. But basically what we're seeing here is that there are three checkpoints that are in this control system. Uh, whoops, I did not mean to move that. Let me put that back. One of those checkpoints is in G1 in the first gap phase. And then basically a cell will stay in G1 until we uh, trigger that checkpoint. And then a cell will start and go through all the way through S phase and into G2 until it reaches its second checkpoint. And it'll stay in G2 until it gets a signal to move into mitosis. But then there's a third checkpoint in metaphase where a cell will start mitosis and stop before anaphase uh, until it gets a signal. And once it gets a signal to go through anaphase, it will complete uh, its mitosis and then usually again uh, followed by cytokinesis. So all those examples of growth regulators we talked about before are really influencing this uh, pretty complicated system. And again, we'll talk about more uh, this more in AP class, but uh, probably not in college prep or honors. And while all that's interesting, what's more interesting is what happens when cells lose their ability to respond to the factors that regulate their growth. They lose their ability to recognize their growth regulators. They start to grow and divide out of control. And as a group of cells continues to grow unchecked, it becomes what we call a tumor. And we can categorize tumors as benign or malignant. And benign tumors are non-life-threatening. They don't invade neighboring tissues, though if they're in a, uh, they can become painful. They can press on other organs uh, and cause pain and certainly cause problems that way. Uh, oftentimes, they can be pretty easily removed. Uh, an example of a very simple benign tumor are, are simply uh, something as simple as a wart. But malignant tumors are life-threatening 
because they invade neighboring tissue uh, and can metastasize and actually cause the neighboring tissue to also become uh, tumorous. Uh, they can break off and spread through our bloodstream and spread. Um, they can be removed surgically but can reoccur and it's hard to get all of them out sometimes and they also can be treated with drugs, uh, chemotherapy and radiation with varied success. And If it sounds like I'm talking about cancer here it's because I am. These malignant tumors are cancer. Uh, we call cancer a condition where these malignant tumors will invade and destroy body tissue and the key um, uh, symptom or the signified by very fast mitosis and cell division basically unchecked growth. In these cases these cells have lost their ability to recognize the signals that tell them to not divide. It's interesting that we have genes uh, we call oncogenes which are genes that can cause cancer but most uh, many people will carry these genes but usually they're in the switched in the off position and are inactive unless they're altered or influenced. And some of the things that can alter or influence these genes and cause cancer are we call carcinogens and they can be things like radiation like x-rays and even exposure to sunlight. Viruses we know can be uh, cancer causing, they can switch on oncogenes and certainly many various chemicals can act to uh, be carcinogens. They attack and damage the DNA of the cell which disrupts this control of cellular division and mitosis. And uh, this is a picture of uh, cancerous tumors uh, or tumors on a cancerous liver. And that brings us to the end of our uh, video on the cell cycle and controls on cell growth. Uh, click down here on our next video where we'll go into the details on mitosis and cytokinesis.